Next up, Martin Mann presents and discusses the literary arts with his guests on A Rose by Any Other Name. Good afternoon and welcome to the debut broadcast of the literary arts program A Rose by Any Other Name. I am Martin Mann, your host. The purpose of this program is to recognize, present, and showcase the literary talents of HKIS students, of which there are assuredly many, both students and talents, that is. My guests today are Thomas Ron and Aidan Cheng, who have been kind enough to bring along their own literary works to share. Recently, the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers in the United States held their annual Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards. My two guests were among those from our school who won awards at the regional level. Thomas was awarded a gold key, the highest honor at this level, for his collection of poems, and Aidan was awarded a silver key for his short story, Baristas. Thomas has offered to read aloud two of the four poems in his collection, The Beach and Drifting. Okay, so this first one is called The Beach, and um, in the beginning it has an epigraph. Uh, it's a quote from the Greek philosopher Epictetus, and it goes, If you are given a wife or child, that is fine. But if the captain calls, you must run to the ship, leaving them and regarding none of them. The beach. We're walking, walking on the beach. We're walking on the beach and the captain calls. You're picking, picking up rocks. You're picking up rocks on the beach and the captain calls. I'm shouting for you to come with me. It's time to go. You pick up a piece of wood left behind by a ship that no longer exists. We could walk on this beach forever, but the captain calls, and it's time to choose. I scream until my lungs feel the salty air ache within. Please, please come. But you're breaking, breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart on the beach, and the captain keeps on calling. And you keep on picking up rocks. The second one is called Drifting. Subtle and unspeakable, rising sideways woke up intoxicated by the ghost of your smell, pressed down, turn around, wrung out, oblique curls, and something that can't be grasped, like black smoke packed tight against the ground, forever melting, subtle and unspeakable. Thank you, Thomas. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what the two poems were about? Uh, what did you have in mind when you were writing them? Um, okay, well, with the first one, um, with the beach, it was... Um, I, I read this. I read this thing. I, I read this short thing by um, Epictetus called the Manual, and basically Epictetus is like, you know, I'm going to write a manual saying how, how to live your life and how to live a good life, and Epictetus was a Stoic, so that meant that he thought that, um, you shouldn't really pay too much attention to like how the world is going. So he said like, you know, you're going to get in a rut if you get too emotionally invested in things. So just sort of keep separate from the world, right? And so then he applies this to the whole idea of being being alive, right, and death. So he says, think about being alive, like being, you know, you're in a big, okay, you're in a big journey on a ship, and then you stop the ship for a bit, and then you go on the beach. And then when you're on the beach, then that's what life is. And so eventually you're going to have to go back on the ship, and, you know, so you're going to have to die, right? So there's no point in getting too caught up in being on the beach. It's just like a short vacation. And so when I read that, I thought, like, oh, well, that's pretty interesting because... I mean, I really like the metaphor, so I sort of built it around that, how, you know, a lot of us are, are afraid of dying, and we don't want to leave the beach, so to speak, so mm -hmm. there's this conflict between, you know, leaving the beach, which is like what you have to do eventually, and uh, staying on it, and wanting to stay on it. So would you say that that was, would you say you had a goal in expressing that, and in, in trying to convey that emotion? Well, I don't know if I did it very well, because, I don't know, when, when I give it to people to read, they... They, they don't really pick up on it unless I tell them. And I think it's just because I don't make it obvious enough. But, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's a nice sort of, like, it's a cute poem otherwise. But I don't feel like the message is as important as... You know. mm -hmm. And what about your second poem, Drifting? Um, I'm, I'm actually not quite sure. I mean, that was more just like a, a senses piece, just sort of like trying to write something that's sort of just like a vision, like a picture, just like a little picture. It's not, I don't know, I don't think there's any meaning behind it or anything. And uh, when you write poems in general, do you sit down with a, a certain goal, a certain message you want to convey, or is it simply a, a, a spontaneous thing, that you, that, an outpouring of uh, emotions, if you will? Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say either way, but I'd suppose more the latter because I don't know. I don't, I don't sit down and think like, well, I'm going to write a poem now about, about death or something. I don't know. It sounds a bit sort of too serious for me. It's just, it's just sort of what sounds nice, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Conversely, do you ever feel that uh, your emotions can't be adequately expressed in words? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose I don't do much of, you know, expressing my emotions in words, but I suppose sometimes there is like a, I mean, okay, well, I suppose when you're actually, when, when I'm actually writing a poem, it's not like I think like, oh, I'm trying to put something into words that doesn't really come across, but then I suppose the real moment where that realization occurs is when somebody else reads it. So if I'll send it to a friend and say, oh, what do you think about it? And they'll say, oh, well, I think it's really interesting how you did all of this and this and this. And I said, well, I wasn't trying to do that. But I mean, it's still a good thing, but it's, it's something very different. So I think not, not while I'm writing it, I suppose, is the answer to your question. Yeah. And when people don't really pick up on what you meant in the, in the, in the beginning, do you, do you feel that uh, it, it's disappointing or do you feel that Oh, it's... no. I mean, I think it's great that other people can take something away from it that I can. I mean, I know, like, I mean, I think anyone, when anybody reads anything, is going to get something different from the exact meaning that the author intended. So I, I feel like it's fine. It's mm -hmm. not that big of a deal, really. Uh, I suppose in the end, um, what's your aim in writing poems? Is it is it simply literature for its own sake? Well, I don't know. I like to think that I do it just to get popular, and you know, so everyone will think I'm a cool person. No, I just kidding. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't really think. I, I don't really th do that consciously. I don't really think that there's an aim. I mean, I'm, there might be, but I don't, yeah. That's, that's, All right. Well, well, if you're here to get famous, then this is the right place. As I introduced earlier, Aiden won a silver key for his short story, Baristas, about his experiences in Starbucks. Here's an excerpt from that story. A K comes every day in the same outfit. It's black on black on black. Black shoes, black trousers, and black shirts. Like the coffee that we brew. Black on black on black. Every day at 5.45 in the morning, he lurches out of his pitch black room, kitchen, bathroom, personal space that he shares with his parents. Most mornings, he wishes that he lived somewhere else, where he didn't share a room with his parents so that he wouldn't have so much trouble waking up, but the landlord wouldn't let grant them a window to let the sun in. He quietly wishes his still-sleeping parents goodbye as he carefully chooses, then dons the many black-on-black-on-black -black -black outfits that he had set out the night before. As he staggers onto the early bus to his work, he wonders if she was awake yet. Black on blur on black, he would slip in and out of dreams with cloudy, glittery glimpses of visions clinging on while he enjoys the shallow mechanical sleep that one can only experience on motorized transport. When he wakes up at the final stop, he uses the handrails as a primary source of stability, his legs and the ground unsteady. He glances left at a workplace, sighs on cue, and trudges towards the ever closer Starbucks sign. You can always tell when Ake was going to leave work. Ten minutes before he leaves, a girl we have all learned to recognize comes in. She is of average Asian, women, Asian woman build, which is short. So, half out of insecurity, half out of necessity, she wears two-inch insoles in her worn-out black Converse sneakers that gives her that extra inch to escape the sweaty armpit in the MTR. She wears acid-washed jeans with the left back pocket ripped in half, an expensive Guns N' Roses vintage tee, easily $250 at Retrostone, and an expression of bliss as she waits patiently, excitement glimmering in her eyes. A K clomps from work in his clomping Doc Martens, grungy shirt, and more pockets in his pants than one can count or needs, black on black on black as usual. Like the clomp on clomp on clomp of his boots, he finds her, waiting like a lapdog on the bar stools that people impatient for their drinks sit on, bending over to whisper into her ear the plans that he had in store for the night. Her expression turns from excited to ecstatic. With her arm under his, he led her out into the mezzanine, the lights of Causeway Bay, eager to welcome them to yet another night. Thank you, Aiden. Could you tell me in your own mind what this story was about when you were writing it? Was this story semi-autobiographical or completely autobiographical? Well, these people are real, and all their man mannerisms is what I um, discern after working with them for a month. 
And of course, there are some details that have been, been embellished, but for the most part, it is completely autobiographical. And was there an aim to your writing the story? Was there an express aim that you wanted to convey to the reader through these different characters' experiences? Um, through these different characters' experiences, I wanted to really convey the message that, um, especially for us uh, kids at HKIS, because we have we're so we're so privileged and we go to this excellent school and like um, like the person I just read, um, Akay, uh, he he dropped out of school at sixteen to work at Hagen Dazs, mm -hmm. you know, and and um, and he's been working ever since and now he's like. Um, thirty something, and, and he has a girlfriend, but and he wants to get married, and but but the thing is, like he he doesn't know if he could afford um, marriage and kids, and like he's also living with his parents, you know, and it's it's just this story that 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 lots of people um, are not familiar with, you know, and this is the life of like many, like I'd say millions of Hong Kong um, people, like. The, this is the story of their lives, right? It's it's not like, oh, where are you going to go to college? It's it's not it's not a question of where you're going to go to college. It's a question of, do you have the funds and can you scrape together enough to go to college? Right. At all, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a good one or a bad one, as long as you go somewhere, you know. So, uh, yeah. it's a I'll wake up call. I also noticed that um, in your writing, in in the actual story, you repeat a lot of memes, a lot of. Uh, this the phrase like black on black on black and then in a different uh, in a different person's story there was uh, tap 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 yeah. uh, could you tell us about that um well one thing that I learned working uh, for a month at Starbucks is that like um, your whole life really falls into this extremely repetitive rhythm and it's it's not like school where we have different classes and we have new things that we learn but literally you're doing the exact same thing every single day you know and i i just wanted to convey this um like like you're car it's like it's like carrying a really large backpack and you're just like slugging it right you just like step after step after step right and and why do you do it because you want to cuz in cantonese it's called one sit right and um which means like you have to find like it's finding food like literally um, so I wanted to just convey how it's just really, um, just really monotonous and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to write a short story rather than a factual personal memoir? Um, I chose to write a short story because if it was a personal memoir and completely truthful, I don't think that I would be able to tell the story, um, as, as, dramatically I'd like to say and as convincingly you know and um I don't I don't know if if my if my fellow um like coworker here gets up at 5 45 in the morning you know and I don't know if he shares um if he shares like a place with his parents but he's just like so that's why I chose to write a short story just to like just really emphasize those de those details right, right. so it's a sort of story truth yeah. If you yeah. All right. I suppose more general questions for the two of you. How do you see the creative writing scene at HKIS? Is it something that classes should be allowing more of, or teaching more of, even? I don't. Know. I mean, I think I think people are a little bit scared to do creative writing for the sake of creative writing. Um, like, do you get that, Aiden? Where it's sort of you do creative writing because the teacher told you. It's not because. Um, I would say it's more of that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's more like, oh, look, you must now emulate the style of Tim O'Brien, you know, in junior English. And then now you must write a creative um, creative piece. And, of course, things like the Alliance really gives incentive, right? You know, right. it gives incentive. Hey, you know, yeah. like... And, like, Mrs. Tan was doing a great job with um, encouraging people to write things to submit for that. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was in her class, and she encouraged me to... To like write a write write a write a story on it, so.